Steve, have you ever wondered why Pam is called Pam? No, I haven't actually. And shouldn't you be spraying that? Well, it's very interesting actually. Pam, P-A-M, stands for, it's an acronym, you see, <laughs> product of Arthur Mayerhoff, P-A-M. He's the guy who invented Pam. Arthur Mayerhoff, product of Arthur Mayerhoff. But you know, I was thinking, he could just as easily have called it Man, Mist of Arthur Mayerhoff, or he could have called it Sam, Spray of Arthur Mayerhoff, or he could have called it Cam, Creation of Arthur Mayerhoff. Oh, for heaven's sake, give me that. Pam scam, I don't know. Gee, I should have bought you the no-name brand. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, uh, cooking spray can be used for other purposes in the kitchen, apart from the obvious ones. Absolutely, Carl. Whenever I'm measuring honey, it always gets stuck to the, uh, to, to the vessel. So what I would do, I'd just spray the inside lightly with that. I'd get my honey like so, pour it in like that. I'm looking for the measurement that I require and instantly it will just pour out like so. How does that look? Now and normally that would stick all in on the inside. That is a very that's all cleared on the neat inside look. trick. Look okay. at how quickly that came out. Absolutely. Uh, there's something else I'd like to pass along to the folks. If you don't want to purchase a commercial cooking spray, you can quite easily um, do your own. You can get um, a spray bottle. Make sure it's very clean. Clean, of course. A new, yeah, yeah. A new 12 ounce spray bottle. Put two ounces of canola oil in it, along with 10 ounces of water, and shake it and. Pss, pss, you got your thing. cooking space. Same thing. Perfect. So coming up on the program today, we have so he, this guy probably knows all about Arthur Mayerhoff and all these. Probably people. does. Yes. Uh, he's <laughs> an he's an historian. Pretty John good. Fitzgerald actually knows a lot about Newfoundland history, and uh, what are we going to be cooking with historian John Fitzgerald? We're going to make some beautiful medallions of pork with a balsamic vinaigrette and grilled plums and apples. Oh, grilled plums. That mm. sounds interesting, yeah. and. We also have your good lady wife on the program today. Pat Watson is with us, uh, who's an excellent baker and uh, much better than you. <laughs> and she's going to make an apricot oatmeal cake for us. So stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. And it's our great pleasure to welcome our very favorite Newfoundland historian, John Fitzgerald, to One Chef, One Critic. Well, it's great to see you. <laughs> Good to see you again, John. How are you? Excellent, John. Perfect. Um, Perfect. So, what do, what do we have for our historian friend? Well, John, what we've got today with some beautiful pork medallions. Oh, we're going medallions. to be pan-searing them with some shallots and uh, making a, a balsamic uh, uh, reduction with that. Carl's going to be grilling some uh, fresh plums there and some okay. apples. And we're going to be serving that with some raw egg noodles. So let's get started then. So. Now, uh, just a question, Steve. Do I have to spray these uh, bits of fruit? No, with no, it? the, the, the grill's already been sprayed. So oh, where you go. Great, there you, you go. go. Great, yeah. great tip. Spray the grill before. First, yes. before <laughs> While it's cold. Yeah. Um, what, I'm just seasoning them with a little bit of paprika. We've got some onion powder and some garlic powder in there, and a little bit of Italian seasoning. Can I ask a question, Steve, because have you let those sit a little while before you season them, do you? Yes, I do. I want to bring them up to room temperature. So it'll absorb the flavors a lot more. Right. right. Okay. We'll nice. I guess they cook quite, uh, cook faster at room temperature. Absolutely, as well. Carl. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. A little bit of olive oil. I'm going to put some butter in there, and I'll pop the pork in there, and I'll get you to turn it over afterwards. So. Oh, you're the you're the pork minder. Oh, wow. <laughs> Heavy responsibility. I the. Uh, I'm watching this. I'm watching this. It's Lots right of butter. I see. Uh, I love, no shortage of butter. No shortage of butter. Everything goes oh, better with butter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, John, I know that you've studied so much history in your career as as an historian, mm -hmm. uh, and 
in, in particular Newfoundland history. I know you studied Irish history and so on. Sure. But um, what is the one one nugget of Newfoundland history that you don't think is well enough known by we Newfoundlanders or, or celebrated enough by we Newfoundlanders? Wow, that's a that's not an easy question to answer, Carl. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't told about that one before I came up. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, do your best. I'll do my best. Hmm, that's a that's a that's an excellent. Well, you know, I'm always impressed. I I've been in and out of um, the city of Ottawa quite a fair bit. It's where I I did my my studies. Yes. Um, and uh, when I did my PhD and. I have a lot of friends in central Canada and a lot of family in northeast uh, United States. And I guess the thing that impresses me is how long Newfoundlanders have been traveling to the center of Canada and into the New England area. And yeah. we all know this, right? Yeah. And we tend to forget it, but there's a yeah. long history of a long history of Goodness. families and, and yes. connections there yeah. which which um, which and further south, because all of my, okay. practically every one of my uh, uh, my father's brothers and sisters moved to New York. New York. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, it turns out I had family. We found family in in the Boston, in the Gloucester Ooh. area. Oh yes, uh, yeah. And and they had gone, 120, 120 years ago. My, wow. my grand my grandfather's uh, siblings. Yeah. So um, it was quite a. Uh, it was quite a, a great discovery that we'd made mm -hmm. down there. You know? you know, we live in an interesting time. I mean, we, we live in the in the age of budgets. Yes, don't yeah. we? And um, you know, and you hear people talking. Well, will we go? Will we stay? Yeah. Um, and there's a long history of oh, toing and froing from goodness. Newfoundland and yes. Labrador, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, a, a long, long history. Long, long history. Yeah. So um, you tend you tend now, to see that. Now, is there anything that would particularly surprise Newfoundlanders to find out about? Uh, for example, I'll tell you what okay. surprises a lot of people when I tell them. I tell them that not only did the Newfoundland dog originate on this island, okay. but the Labrador dog originated on this island as well. Some, some would, would you agree? Some would call it the St. John's water dog, but you, right. have, to be, you have to be sort of careful about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't want to upset anyone. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I mean, that, that's what... The other thing I've enjoyed, too, is, is going to, um, to places like London. And oh, Paris, yes, yeah, and 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 Ireland, and seeing the Newfoundland connections there. For example, if you go into Westminster Abbey, the Newfoundland coat of arms is on one of the plaques there. Yes, it's on one of the um, it's on one of the plaques in Amiens Cathedral, and yeah. and yeah. Um, of course our huge history of of, of Beaumont Hamel. Um, oh my gosh, and, yeah, which we're you know. Yeah, we're, we're we're very aware of. Well, we were know. the cornerstone of empire. The, well, the we first were the colony. cornerstone of empire. And, and if you, you know, I, just speaking about London, I sorry to cut you off, but yeah. one thing that that I just makes me my chest swell a bit well, is when I stand outside Buckingham Palace, okay. and I and all of the columns are yes. are arra arranged, yeah. and it's it's a different part of the empire. Right. Yes. The yeah. very right. first column. Yeah says Newfoundland. It does. Really? Yes. It does. It does. Yeah. And it has, it has the old seal on it from, from 1824 that was granted to Governor Cochrane, and that, yeah. is, that was the, um, the motto, Haec Tibi Donafero, Latin, I bring you these gifts, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it has the fishermen, and I believe it's probably Britannia and Mercury there, but mm. you can see that, and that was the one that was granted in, in 1824 when wow. we first got a, an executive yeah. council and a... And a yeah. Before the House yeah. of Assembly. Yeah. So, for John, I'll just get you to click the poll, if you would. I can't. Uh, yes, don't. So you have, you have responsibility. I, <laughs> oh, I be careful here. Yeah. Uh, and, Steve, tell me if I'm doing this. No, you're doing right it now. great. We've got our shallots yeah. in there again with our butter and our olive Love. oil there. Love and in a second, we're going to put some. And you have a food in. critic with oh, you. Oh, so. yes. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in very select company here. I, Absolutely. I, uh, I have to say, I've. Uh, Do you have a favorite story from Newfoundland history, John? It's sort of hard to. It's hard to, um, to to sort of yeah. have one favorite, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I um, I certainly am um, I'm, I'm distracted. Carl, is this is this mustard you're putting? Yeah, it's a little bit of Dijon mustard. Oh, put Dijon. Wow. Yes. Ah, Dijon. I can see. I yeah. can see what's going on here now. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I sort of always have been partial to the period of the 1830s to 50s. Oh yes, and, yeah. and the 1930s to 50s. Right. So, and I'll, I'll just tell you. I mean, most recently now. Um, Historians do all sorts of uh, research and all sorts of things. I've just finished working on, on a, a, a court case. Mm -hmm. But um, 
where you actually have to go and read evidence oh, and, yes, and then you question, yeah. Yeah. you know, what, what do the documents say? Yeah. But um, the, uh, the other thing, though, I've, I've just returned to briefly is with the Beaumont Hamill story and the costs of the sacrifice that mm. really, really came to bear on Newfoundland and, oh, and yeah. Labrador. And Tremendous. I mean, it, it was, it was a, a, the selflessness of these people who went over there is, is bracing. Um, oh, totally, but, yeah. but also, really, especially, too, I was trying to get a handle on the financial costs because, as you know, we were one of the few places, the only place, mm -hmm. uh, apart from Ireland, perhaps, mm -hmm. where we actually gave up mm -hmm. self-government mm -hmm. in, the, in the 1930s, and we had a commission of yep. government for, for 15 years. Mm -hmm. it, it was trying to, trying to find that, and I've, I've sort of spent a fair bit of time chasing those documents in the archives, you know? Yeah. So that can also be fun. The paper chase is a lot of fun for historians, too, but, bet, yeah. but, but especially the, the circumstances around how we lost self-government, but also, you know, the, 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 in the midst of this, and the tremendous financial costs, the First World War cost $38 million mm. out of $101 million mm. in debt. So I've been, yeah, yeah that's a lot. And, yeah. But for the 1930s, that was an enormous sum of money. Yeah. $100 million yeah. is almost nothing to us today. You know, you yeah. hear these numbers right. bandied about, yeah. about yeah. theories and all sorts so of things. So I just yeah. want to quickly mention something, which I'm sure you probably know about it, but mm. when, I, when I read uh, the book 1919, which was about the peace talks in Paris at Versailles Margaret after Ginsburg. the First World War, there was a little passage in there about, I think it was the very first formal meeting of all of the powers around the, the table. And uh, Canada, the Canadian delegation, walked out. They stormed out. Do you know why they stormed mm -hmm. out? It's because the Newfoundland delegation was seated ahead of them. Oh. And because of us being the first colony, a senior part of the empire, we took precedence over Canada. And I think it was Borden, the Prime Minister of Canada, I can't quite remember the name. He was so outraged that Newfoundland mm. would be seated ahead of Canada that the entire delegation well, got I, up and stormed out. Walked, I yeah. thought, isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, okay. I'm going to the wine cellar. Oh, please cellar. do, please yeah. do. Yeah. Cellar, okay. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so we've got to have Paul come there now. Oh, um, what, what you can do there, John? So just, <laughs> just, just pour the noodles Oops. into the boiling water there. That would be okay. great. Okay. And away we go. We've got all our fruit ready and the aroma from the oh pork. My. Fantastic. There we go. Okay. And that's it. We're ready to go. Two minutes and we'll be in the dining room. Lovely. Lovely. And it's Greg Winter in the wine cellar today. Dialogue Wines, how you doing? I'm well. You? Great. Um, we've just cooked medallions of pork and I've grilled some plums to go mm -hmm. along with this pork. So, what kind of wines do you think uh, would go with this dish? Well, pork is a uh, very wine friendly dish. Yes. I think the only thing you really have to be concerned about when you're grilling pork uh, or, or preparing pork, uh, again, is not to have a, a wine that's going to overwhelm it because it is a lighter meat, so it's not mm -hmm. like you're barbecuing a steak or something like that. So you, do, you just let's make sure we don't overwhelm. <laughs> uh, so you could go with white or red, I think, in mm -hmm. this situation. Uh, the first suggestion I'm going to make, Carl, is, is uh, a Pinot Noir. And this is a fairly classic choice if you're going to go with a red wine uh, with a pork dish. And the producer here is Mudhouse, and they're from New Zealand. Um, this is a very fruit-driven um, Pinot Noir, but it also has uh, some notes of cloves and herbaceousness, um, which might complement the dish, the fruit in the, in the dish that you just mentioned, the plum. Um, the second wine, if you want to go with a white wine, this is from Domaine Lafage, and Lafage is located in uh, the Roussillon, so very far out the south of France, very warm climate. Uh, the grape here is uh, white Grenache, blend it with something called Roussan. And what this gives you is a white wine that's very fruit driven, uh, peach, stone fruit, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, might pair well with the pork as well, mm -hmm. could be a good choice. Um, and then finally, from the same producer, we also have Demain Lafage. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Grenache. If somebody really wants a fuller bodied red wine, um, that won't overwhelm, mm -hmm. but will certainly be mm -hmm. a big mouthful of fruit. Okay. This will pair quite well with your grilled plums, as a matter of fact. Mm. And this is about $24 at the NLC um, and is, is a new product. And uh, I think that you've got three different wines here that are uh, all very uh, workable with your okay. dish. You've sold me on this one because of what you said about the plums. Okay. Because I was responsible for the plums today. So <laughs> okay, very I good. Want to, I want this to come out good. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Carl. Now we have our balsamic vinaigrette mixed with our pasta. 
our grilled plums, our grilled apples, our shallots, one more little spoonful there, and we're going to top that with our beautiful pork medallions, like so, nicely seasoned. So, let's go and visit John and Carl in the dining room, and now let's see what they think about this dish. A little, uh, a be. little of the red. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. There we go. Thank you. Now, we have to get your judgment, okay. sir, okay. Uh, on this meal and, and tell us what you think of All it. All right. All right. I'm curious to see what my grilled plum tastes like. Okay. That is fantastic. Mm. That is fantastic. As good a plum as ever I've tasted. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> John, just to chat a little bit more, sure. um, you were talking about, uh, you know, the war debt and oh, having yes. responsible government taken away from us. Why did we put up with commission governments for so long? We didn't have to. Well, the, the whys and what could have and what should have often occupy us for <laughs> years yeah, after yeah, trying to yeah. figure out. Because initially it was why. supposed to last for what, 10 years or something? It was supposed to be a short experiment. Yeah. And uh, it was a 15 year long experiment. Yeah. It was, it was an, an astounding one. But before you get onto that, I, I just have to, you can see in my lapel, I have a, a little blue flower. Now, do you know what that one is? Uh, is it a forget-me-not? It is. It's a, it's a material one, but it's, it is a, it's a, a forget-me-not. Okay. And these are the ones that grow on the graves of the Newfoundland soldiers in Beaumont Hamill, and they were the, the original sort of memorial flower right. um, that a lot of people began yeah. putting in their lapels after the yes. war. And yeah. you'll see a lot of them now coming up in the next year. But I've brought one for each of you. Well, so thank, I thought you thank you very, very much. I thought you might like I, I, uh, so I will wear it with pride. Yes. We will well, definitely we will. wear it with it's pride. A, I'm going to stick it right there, there you for go. now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, thank you but so much. John. A little uh, yeah. reminder yeah. of our um, of our history. <laughs> uh, now, I know you, you've uh, become a, a bit of an expert on the, uh, well, I suppose the last century in, in Newfoundland politics. Okay. Um, would, you, would you venture to give us your opinion on who you think the the best leader of the last century Newfoundland was? Oh, you're asking me a difficult question. I'm going to stick my neck out, and though he was profoundly controversial, uh, I'm going to have to say Sir Richard Squires. Really? Oh. oh. We don't, there's so much... We Even though they almost had his head off <laughs> during oh, the riot at Confederation, almost, or at, uh, um, in, at Colonial in, Building. At the Colonial yes. Building. Um, we're, we're still learning things about Richard Squires, but he was one astounding, astounding character. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he escaped so many of these, <laughs> yeah, of these right. sort of, uh, very narrowly. Um, and he, he, was, uh, he was on the scene throughout the 20s. Um, it, ju just an incredible, an incredible political figure. And um, I, I think in terms of his leadership, the fact that he was able to put together governments and, and just keep that, you know, two steps ahead of controversy yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, so I, crafty I, as a fox. Crafty <laughs> as a fox. <laughs> but I have to say, I, I, um, I, I sort of know a little bit about his family. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, th they, um, they certainly, I, I had the privilege of interviewing his last, his last living daughter. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, when I was in Ottawa. Just so. one last quickie mm. question. Uh, Great Fire of 1892. Okay. St. John's, a major part of it, raised, just completely destroyed. Right. If you could bring back one building that existed before the fire, one building that was destroyed, if you could bring it back, which building would you bring back? I'd have to say the Athenaeum. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. yeah, I think it would be the Athenaeum. I guess anything to do with, with uh, sort of public buildings, mm. public spaces, yeah. libraries, museums, anything like that. Yeah. Um, Libraries are so important, yeah. and I'll leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we won't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, thank you very much, John, for being on the program. Cheers. Uh, always a pleasure to chat with you. Carl, great to see you. Best to you. see you, Steve. And we will be Take back care. with uh, Mrs. Watson, Pat Watson. Yes, the other half, the better half, is going to show us how to bake an apricot oatmeal cake. Stay tuned. Well, our next guest spent most of her career as a banker, but when her money was made, <laughs> she decided to, uh, to relax and take a part-time job as a Hallmark 
card sales representative. Yes, there are actually Hallmark card sales representatives. <laughs> and then she spends every other waking hour cooking and baking, trying to maintain her husband's muscular belly. <laughs> and her husband happens to be standing to her right. She is Pat Watson, and we are very happy to have this kind and wonderful person here. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be here. Well, yeah. I figured, you know, I had I had to give you a break away from, you know, slaving yeah, for yeah, I this know. is it. This I is know. it. For his his nibs. There. <laughs> well, Pat, what are we we're going to be making? It's apricot oatmeal cake. Okay, do you want to get started then? Okay. So, um, you need a 9-inch prepared pan and you pour hot water over your oatmeal. Okay. And then it's two eggs, soft butter, and uh, brown sugar. You mix that up first. Okay, well, let's go for it then. Okay, I'm just going All to... All good ingredients. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Just get that softened a little bit I love bit apricots. There. Yeah. So you have to mix this until uh, it's a bit creamy. Very good. And then to that, once you've got that mixed pretty good, so we can add the oatmeal to it now? Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, take this out of here now. We'll just stir it. You can just pour it all in. Oh, all of it? Yeah, okay. it all goes in. All your oatmeal. Don't be shy. No, don't mm -hmm. be shy, Carl. Mm -hmm. I love oatmeal, actually. Yes. It's, uh, it's, actually, it's a pretty healthy cake. It's good for your heart. Yep. There we go. And then we add um, a whole wheat flour. Okay. And your chopped. Oh, and I better add the uh, baking soda and baking powder and nutmeg. Mm. And then your chopped apricots. Very good. Lovely. So you just stir that all together. Very quickly, very nicely. Mm -hmm. And into a pan, you sprayed some Pam around it? Yes, I've got that prepared pan. You can either use Pam or butter and flour, just whichever you normally yeah. would use. Very good. I just want to make sure it's mixed there. Good. Because it's going to go into Carl's oven later, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. yes. Yes, it's got to go in the oven. So we just pour that into there. Very it's very good. thick. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really thick cake. Okay. There we go. I'll take that away from you. Okay. Oh, there's a sec there. It's all spread around. Perfect. Okay, and then just spread that out like that. And in the meantime, you would pop that in the oven and bake it um, for? for about 25, 30 minutes and test it mm -hmm. at um, 350. And in the meantime, you'd melt some butter, brown sugar, which I've already started mm -hmm. here, yep. and then add coconut and pecans. And stir that in, yeah. And you get that all stirred up. When this is finished, you bring this out you um, uh, spread your mixture from here over it, bake it in the oven, or um, put it under your... Oh, broiler. broiler. Yeah, yep. broiler, yep. just to brown it a little bit. Yep. And then just leave it to cool, and it makes a nice hard topping. And on we it. have a, one here, mm -hmm. uh, which shows that nice hard topping. And Absolutely. we've got a piece here. Yep. We'll just take a little bit um, of... And what is this? Oh, I might have known. Central yeah. Dairy's <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> oh, Central Dairy's ice cream. There we oh, go. Well, actually, it's farmer's ice cream. It's farmer's it ice cream. There we go, Carl. That's and I, nice. And I think you should be trying that. I'm going to bypass the ice cream. Oh, you're going to bypass the ice cream? Looking yes, after your no. figure, you leave that all that for yeah. my belly. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, uh, I want to taste your, your lady wife's cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You've outdone yourself <laughs> this time, Mrs. Watson. Well, thank You've you. absolutely outdone yourself. Thank you. The finest pie maker in the land. <laughs> she is indeed, Carl. I wouldn't say anything less. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much for oh, being with us. Well, thank you. Thank you for putting up with him all these years. Yes, I know. <laughs> that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. They're like sunshine, aren't they? They remind me of sunny climbs. We have no power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was working a minute ago. We have no power. Oh, yes. It it's not turned on. Yes. Well, you had that really well. I, I, I really jigged that up, yes, didn't I? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, everything's fine. We're set to go. Where's Wells? We've been waiting on him. There we are. <laughs>